All right, what I want to run through right now is how to adjust your trigger on a factory rifle. This is a Browning X-Bolt, um, Hell's Canyon Long Range McMillan, 300 mag. And most of the time when you get a new rifle in, factory, factory rifle triggers are usually around like three to five pounds. But if they're a good adjustable trigger, you'll be able to adjust them whatever your preferences are. And for like a hunting situation, I usually like my triggers around three pounds. If I can get them lower on a factory setting, I will go down to two and a half, but most of the time, Three is a good number for, you know, still being able to have a crisp pull on the trigger and also not having the gun go off randomly because the trigger's set too light. Um, a lot of times when it's colder out too, you might want to have a little heavier trigger. Um, just something to keep in mind. You practice a lot, shoot, you can always adjust your trigger later and figure out what works best for you. So, quickly walk through how I would adjust this trigger on this Browning gun. So, um, first, I look at anything, goes without saying, make sure the gun is unloaded. Gun is unloaded. Basically, what we're going to do is put the gun over. Now I'm just going to take this bottom plate off and then we'll get out the trigger assembly. For this trigger, you have to take out the bottom plate and there's an adjustment screw down the bottom of it. So let's take the plate off here. All right, what I'm going to do before I get any of that uh, trigger adjustment, I'm going to show you what the factory setting was on this Browning gun. So I'm just going to hold it up here. And it's ready to fire. And one of the best things you can get is one of these Lyman uh, trigger pull gauges. You think they're are amazing. Okay, so right now factory setting is four pounds, 2.8 ounces. And the thing to watch out for when you're doing this is when you're pulling the trigger, you don't want to let the gun pull backwards because obviously you're gonna get an inaccurate reading, but four pounds, 2.8 ounces. I kind of want to lower that down to somewhere around three pounds. So what I'm gonna do is hold everything in here, make sure they fall out. And then on these browning guns, you'll notice on the bottom of the trigger here, this is gonna be your trigger adjustment screw, and right now it is coated some material that we have to remove. I'll need to get a, uh, just a little tack or any sort of little knife or something like that to remove all that uh, nail polish so you can get out the screw so you can tighten it or loosen it. So once I finally removed all the nail polish off there with this little tack, then I can finally stick an Allen wrench in there. And uh, clockwise will make the trigger harder to pull, counterclockwise will make the trigger lighter. And right now, since we were a little over four pounds, I'm gonna go counterclockwise to um, make this a little lighter trigger. And one thing I like to do first on any trigger is just take this and tighten it all the way down and then go all the way back up just to give a good starting spot. And as you can see, it was pretty close to being all the way down. Okay, that's all the way bottomed out. back up and before that little Allen screw was sticking up just a little bit. And then one more turn, actually about right there. I'm going to flip it back over, I'm going to try this step again. And, uh, I, mean, I can't get better than that. I want it at three pounds, we're at two pounds, 15.7 ounces. So that's right on the money. I'm just gonna do it one more time. Two pounds, 14 ounces. So we're gonna call that good. It's roughly two pounds, 15.7 ounces. So the next part here, now we have that all set, I'm gonna flip the gun back over and take some of my wife's uh, nail polish until I stole it. And what I'm gonna do with this is basically just put it on the screw to make sure it can't move again. You could use Loctite on here, but I feel like I don't wanna drop any Loctite that seep down into the trigger mechanism. That's why I prefer to use a nail polish. So I'm just gonna take it and just coat it all over the top of the screw. Kinda of get on the sides, make sure you get on the threads. Kind of ample amounts right there. Keep it all in place. And it's a good idea to let it wait for a couple minutes, let it dry, just so you don't flip it over and have it start running everywhere inside your action and trigger mechanism. So let that dry for a little bit and come right back at you. All right, now we just let the nail polish um, dry on top of that trigger adjustment screw. So now basically a simple process. We're gonna assemble everything again. Put the bottom plate back on, the rear, rear screw and front screw. And I'm just gonna get these slightly tightened and then I'm gonna torque them with the uh, fat wrench to uh, 45 inch pounds. And 
again, kind of like on that part, the right ply is kind of like to alternate back and forth just to make sure everything is even. All right. Just assemble this back in there. And there you have it. Now we have a fully adjusted trigger. We started it at four pounds, a little over, what was it, four and a half pounds. And now we're down to two pounds, 15 ounces on a factory trigger. It's definitely a lot smoother. And obviously you take it on the field and test it out, but definitely feels a lot better. And I am standing, so if I was prone, it would feel even more better. But quick and easy. You don't need a lot of tools for this setup, which is great. All you need is a uh, you know, digital trigger pull gauge, a couple Allen wrenches, torque wrench, and you're good to go. So as always, we appreciate you guys checking out these videos. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, see a bunch more stuff like this. Uh, drop any comments down below if you have any questions about setting up your trigger. And I hope you guys have a lot of success this fall.